for coming tonight. Uh, I'm just going to give a very brief overview um, and let the design team jump in and talk about uh, what's on the wall. I just want to, I guess, just clarify that tonight we are focusing on Westwood, which is all on that wall, and then um, well, College Hill, which is on this wall. We're actually will be talking about <coughs> Walnut Hills in Madisonville tomorrow. If you happen to be here from either one of those neighborhoods, after we present tonight, we're happy to sit down with you again at a table and talk about uh, your neighborhoods as well. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is I just want to reinforce the fact that um, we are not looking at the entire neighborhoods. Our efforts are really focusing on the business districts and the transitions from the business districts into the neighborhood. So we're, we're pretty focused, and you'll see that as we go through our presentation tonight. We're coming up with some pretty exciting ideas. Um, I hope you feel the same way. Um, so things that we were doing today. Um, we, were, we started off by taking the notes from the meeting yesterday, distilling those and kind of distributing them throughout the team members. Uh, we started looking at some conceptual build-out alternatives, uh, civic spaces, where some more housing could go, uh, where public uses could go, uh, how, you know, some strategies to get your neighborhood main streets revitalized. Um, then we had Rick and Duane kind of bouncing back and forth between the design team members, uh, thinking about um, what types of changes need to happen to the design of the, the roadways as they go through your neighborhoods, especially in the main street areas, to really encourage them to uh, become much more vibrant, much more economically successful, and a, a better amenity for your neighborhoods. And then um, the Opticos team in particular, we were bouncing around a little bit too, but we've started thinking about how the form-based zones that we've already drafted will be mapped. So we've worked on that all today. So I'm going to hand it off to Joe to kick off the College Hill conversation and the sort of the design uh, efforts for, for College Hill. Thanks everybody for uh, coming back uh, on another beautiful day. <laughs> to help us out. Uh, we learned a lot uh, last night in our first uh, session of the week. The thing I, I thought was interesting, I learned on before filtering out was next year College Hill is going to celebrate its 200th year since incorporation. And the plans were already underway to figure out how to program that event. It's going to be a big event, lots being thought about. And I think that really signified for me, what I was starting to pick up in our uh, table discussions was, first of all, how organized the neighborhood is, and how engaged you are, and what kind of leaders you are in figuring out what your steps are you're going to take to incrementally improve your neighborhood. And so it made sense that you guys were so forthcoming with uh, and patient with us who are, are new to the team, and kind of unpacking for us how the neighborhood operates, what its strengths, weaknesses, and what your visions are and starting to point us toward assets that you have within the neighborhood that can be leveraged further uh, as you think about how it looks in the next 10 uh, years, 15 years and on. So, oh, there's a board missing here, but anyway. We started by looking at uh, what some of your anchors were that are either there or that are there and dormant and could be playing a more prominent role uh, or uh, could be brought together from outside or nearby to, uh, to really make this thing hum. And one thing that was interesting we started seeing is things like the Black Company Theater, which warehouses their goods there. They sometimes practice there. Does everybody know where that's at, by the way? Uh, corner of uh, Marlowe and, and Hamilton. They warehouse their goods there. They practice there sometimes. But then they're performing around the region everywhere except really performing in the neighborhood where they're somewhat based. Similar to that, the, uh, the modern or contemporary dance yeah, center dance there. is in your uh, historic city hall, town hall. And similarly, they have their studios set up there, they have their organization set up there, but they're performing everywhere else. They're doing some events here, they maybe can do more. But when we start to think about all of these types of uh, uses, and there are many, not just theater groups, uh, that you have in here, it really started to inspire us as we started distilling, as Dan mentioned, your the strengths, weaknesses, and visions uh, that you uh, outlined for us. So 
the first frame, just to briefly go through this and we'll get into the, the design thoughts and alternatives, but the first strength was what I already mentioned about your community strength. I think one group at, at my table last night was saying, you know, we're really good at setting things to do in the next six months, 12 months, 18 months, and then systematically checking those things off, working with the city, working with our neighborhood groups, working with our friends and, and businesses that are located there, and getting things done. The Gateway Project was a, a testament to that, the Gateway uh, art installations, some of the streetscaping work that's been done, all very sign, very good signs of a, a strong neighborhood organization. And, and similar to that, uh, because I think of the strength and history of this neighborhood, most of the shops that are in College Hill are run by people who live in College Hill. And so there's this great sense of ownership both on the business side that extends into, into the very strong neighborhoods that uh, kind of connect from all directions uh, to that. The, the weakness is really centered around this stretch of Hamilton between North Bend and uh, Lane Fair Avenue. And it's amazing just from your living and working there how intuitively you get that this is an extremely long area to continuously keep active, to keep feeling safe, to keep feeling programmed and beautiful and all these things. It takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of everything to keep that all operating and humming as, as well as you have to do today. So there was this uh, great focus on finding some location to condense itself, to find nodes or a node where you can bring those uses together, retail, institutional, theater, entertainment, restaurants, whatever, and create a little bit of energy right in the heart of uh, College Hill. So that was, that was one thing. And then the, the second thing was uh, dealing with this perception, and it's related to the, the first thing, that why would you slow down or stop in College Hill when A, it's hard to kind of navigate and figure out if I can park on the side of the street or not. It's not very well set up uh, to communicate that to the passerby. And if we're having such a tough time activating all this, it's very hard to entice somebody to get them to slow down, one, and get them to pull over and get out and go into the shop, two. So we really started to think about how we do our programming, how we do our design, how we do some urban uh, urbanism that starts to take the code and, and find a way to, to make those objections or objectives happen. And then also work with Wayne and Rick to find streetscape and street design uh, means that we can achieve very early on that help uh, sync that up all together. And so a lot of your visions were really uh, to uh, do do some things that can be implemented, again, because you're so forward thinking and you want to set up your priorities. Do set out the list of what we can do in the next 6, 12, 18, 24 months, and then find ways to leverage the coming code to uh, implement a vision that extends on from there. And so as we move into the, the design exercise, we first started by just analyzing uh, by where you circled on the map and what you were talking about last night. Where are those areas? that are either site controlled by the city or a neighborhood group uh, to uh, see redevelopment over, over time. Those areas are shown in, in brown. And just to warn you, this is Hamilton here, North Bend here. These all overlay on this scale, but hopefully this is a, a rough enough picture that makes sense. And then the green uh, properties are areas where people identified assets that if they could only be repositioned, reimagined, a tenant be recruited or brought there and co-located around other things that are starting to happen that they would stand a chance uh, to succeed and we wouldn't have to go through that expensive difficult process of tearing down a building and trying to find a new user a new builder when we've already got buildings that are serviceable uh, in large part there today the other thing that we've learned is that there's a lot of properties controlled by uh, neighborhood organizations in the city and if you just look at this map or large property owners the, the gray is everything controlled by a public or quasi-public uh, entity. The blue, as everybody knows, uh, is controlled by uh, Bishop O'Neill's group, and the red, pinkish color, are major retailers. So you, just looking at the pattern of your, of your neighborhood core, you've got some large stakeholders, large landholders, uh, that are gonna exert some influence there uh, as you look towards the future. 
So, uh, and when we started thinking about how we program this and think about how uses might come in over time and how you might strategize, uh, not just about economic development plays, but how you really strategize about who the end users are gonna be, who you wanna bring here, who you want to fill those tenant, uh, those tenant spaces, uh, what kind of housing to jobs to retail balance that you want. We really started just taking a, a broad idea or sketch of how this might break down the long stretch into a series of kind of more or less distinct, although you can see we're, we're still overlapping, but that's how all kind of great neighborhoods are formed. There's no clear line.